Well, I'm not going to lie. I love to play tremolo, and it was not always uh, that way. Tremolo is a really tough technique to get smooth and effortless. It causes a lot of consternation among mandolin players, and I am no exception. I was no exception. So here, let me just show you what it is, first of all. You got a good example there in The Godfather. And I'll slow it down again just to show you uh, what's going on with my pick. There's an open A string. That's about maximum speed right there. But if you look at the technique, same exact thing as when I'm playing it very slowly. So there's two really important parts about tremolo, and it's the downstroke and the upstroke. I'm sorry to be glib, but uh, there's really no secret. If you've already been playing downs and ups on a single string, like uh, So even any fiddle tune, a simple thing like Angelina Baker or old Joe Clark. So however you do that, that for me anyway, that exact technique with my right hand is what I do when I'm doing tremolo also. So one tip, I would uh, start practicing tremolo in the single string fashion on one string. So I've changed the uh, tablature to reflect this and tried to alert the note readers that we'll play the E on the seventh fret and the F on the eighth fret instead of going up to there. And that way we have one string to worry about for the real um, problem, I'd say. This is a big problem for a lot of musicians, so mandolin players. So make it easy without having to go and making that jump from here to there. That's actually really difficult, so I stay away from it whenever I can. And uh, just as far as getting there, um, whatever exercise you're doing for uh, smoothness with your eighth notes for, say, old Joe Clark or any fiddle tune, anything with eighth notes, uh, constant down up, same exercise, which would mean a metronome of some sort. And I'd work on minimizing. If you notice when I go really fast, I get even smaller. I even get quieter at first just because I don't want to get tense. So right there would be a good exercise. Um, if a metronome's great, uh, you could do it more slowly if you want to though. I'd say the main priority for me is that I'm very, very relaxed right now. And you might find tremolo practice a bit liberating because you're not tied to playing a note on every single pick stroke. Uh, so it's a bit more relaxing. There's nothing wrong with starting this tune like this. And you can make each note last as long as you like. That's called rubato, where you're not uh, tied to a strict tempo. Uh, Pick-wise, I am uh, a little bit angled right here. You can see it. And it's very consistent. I'm not going down, up, down, up, two different things. Uh, just keeping it very uh, steady right there. I'm also really just brushing the top bit of the strings like this. Not digging in there like you would when you're really trying to play a single note and make the good tone come out. So you're best practicing even lighter than you think. This should be a very silent, super relaxed exercise. Tremolo. Uh, I should say there's some schools of thought where a tremolo should match a metronome marking, and it's taught this way. If you're in any mandolin orchestra where everyone else has learned tremolo this way, it's a good idea to get your tremolo matched up. That means uh, quarters. You can do downstrokes with eighths, and two, and three, and four, and at that point, that's a pretty fast tremolo for a student, so that might be plenty. Sixteenth notes, two E and a three E and a four E, one E and a two E and a three E and a four. And if you can do the sixteenths, let's slow it down a little bit. Now I can get thirty-second notes, two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three. That's pretty fast, uh, 30 second notes there. So it's all just names. We're still only just doing downs and ups. Remember that when anyone talks about eighth notes or sixteenths or 30 seconds, there's nothing else besides down and up. So that's all we've got. So sometimes you turn your metronome down slower 
if you want to go to the next uh, thing, 16th, 30 seconds, etc. Uh, I did not learn my tremolo that way. I just really just, um, you know, went back and forth. I did work with metronomes at the same speed that I would, say, be learning a fiddle tune. Uh, and that's how it came about, just little by little. And I listened to a lot of great tremolo. I listened a lot to Don Sternberg's Angel Eyes album. He plays really lovely tremolo on that. Uh, David Grisman also, all, all, everything he does, especially the slow ones with the tremolo. And then Dave Apollon was an inspiration also. Let's take a look at some of the things we can add to tremolo, uh, just to spruce it up a little bit. And varying the volume would be one. And the way you're doing that is a little extra pinch right here. So you have a real nice, uh, gentle feel on the A string like this. And you probably won't even be able to see it, but I'm tremoloing and then... So if I had to describe it, it's a little extra tension. I hate to use that word and advise, but I checked this out and that's what it seems to be. A little extra squeeze right there to vary the volume. Uh, varying the speed is something I already mentioned I do. Don't do this if you're uh, in one of those orchestras or involved in uh, some type of groove music where they expect the tremolo to be in time with the music. Uh, but varying the speed is very effective. You can have... At that point, sometimes people who grew up with uh, really the fast tremolo in their minds, like how I uh, played in the performance at the start of the video, that might even seem not like tremolo at all, but it's definitely the style of tremolo you'll hear in Brazil and choro music. Jacob de Bandelim had a real slow, he could play fast tremolo, but very often would be playing slow tremolo. And of course, Bill Monroe in Bluegrass, he often plays uh, two strings at the same time, but his tremolo is quite slow. And that's what gives it its appeal. So I'm, I'm a fan of the slow tremolo, but it's nice as a technician musician to have uh, the option to go fast or slow. Another effect that you might have together from another aspect of music that pairs well with tremolo is a slide, and that would be like this. Instead of going as two separate notes, we could play D. We could also slide back up. back up again. So several slides there all over the place. Most of them going up, but don't forget with tremolo, it's pretty easy to slide down as well. Next we have vibrato. That would be, um, that's the effect for vibrato. You actually bend the string a little bit, and vibrato could turn, say, this line into this. Let's try another one. This goes up to the F. And here's with vibrato. So they really do go out of tune a little bit. It's an interesting, interesting sound. It's uh, a very uh, typical technique in Brazilian choro music. Uh, again, Jacob de Bandelim, uh, the one that uses vibrato there, uh, taken from the tradition of Portuguese guitar and fado music. So it just adds a little bit of emotion to your tremolo. And we finally have the crec or the cry. This is uh, the technique is would be called a pull off where instead of just playing a note like that, you play the wrong note above and pull off. And pull off works awesome with tremolo because we have the note that keeps going, so we have a... That'll be the line, the line's this. Let's go all the way down to B flat, so. And to each one, we'll add the pinky. So here we go with tremolo. It's 
so sometimes sounds like a laugh too, not so much a cry. Krek, by the way, means cry in Yiddish. It's a feature of klezmer music with the clarinet that you might be familiar with. And once again, Jacob de Bandolim uh, uses this like crazy in Brazilian music and all the people that play that style of mandolin, the crack. Uh, one last one, EQ uh, shifting. If you have uh, a note here, say this G, um, you can play your pick here by the bridge. And maybe you could tell by the time you get up here, there's that sweet spot, the EQ shifts, where a very tinny, trebly sound gradually gets a little more mid-range and round, as we often say. And guess what? When you get back to the end of the string again, it gets trebly again. So you need to play the very same fret next to where you're playing. So you've got a significant difference in uh, EQ between the ends of the string and the center of wherever you are. Let's, let's see that in uh, practice. beyond the bounds of good taste once again just to show you um, how that works the EQ shift so you'll often see me moving up and down when I tremolo it might be a bit of a tick by this point but it definitely is trying to get a little more humanity into the mandolin uh, a little more uh, change dynamics as we call all of these effects so I hope you enjoyed this lesson on tremolo I'll see you next time bye <laughs>